Are you ready for more players in the GPU game? I certainly am, and that's one reason why I'm so excited that Intel's joining the party. But it's looking like Chinese companies, domestic Chinese companies, are looking at getting into the game as well. So this is Jingjia Micro. I'm sorry for anybody who speaks Chinese. I just, I'm sure, butchered the pronunciation. And this is their website here. They produce GPUs. But um, what we're looking at today is some future GPUs where they're actually looking at competing with actual AMD and NVIDIA level gaming GPUs. Well, what do we have here? I have this article here, which is Google translated from, uh, from Chinese. So uh, we do have to give that a bit of a grain of salt. I don't speak the language natively to translate it myself. Um, if any of you do, let me know in the comment section. I do read all, all of the comments. And uh, thank you to my subscribers. Uh, you're used to the fact that I will be putting the link in my, in my description of this video. So, hey, my phone buzzed, but I'm not re-recording. That's just how we roll here. Anyway, <laughs> links to everything I talk about will be in the description of the video. As my subscribers and members who clicked that join button and supported me financially, thank you so much. You're extra beautiful people, as you are all used to. Anyway, so what do we have here? So in this article, they're talking about like what, what cards, what level of performance are these domestically produced Chinese GPUs targeting? Well, it does not look to be the modern high end. It's the question I asked in this article was, can it compete or catch up with a GTX 1080 Ti? And the answer is a little bit complicated because they seem to be performing, uh, listing specs against a GTX 1080, not a 1080 Ti. But in general, it seems like, again, this is Google translated, but they're saying that the JM9 series, that's this, this GPU line we're talking about here, hope to reach the level of the end of 2017 and the beginning of 2018. I, I think what this is trying to translate and say is that they're targeting the 2017, 2018 level of Nvidia GPUs in terms of performance. So that's not mind blowing, but hey, a GTX 1080, is a respectable gaming card for 1080 and 1440p right now, and also going into next year, which is when I'd probably expect these things. Before we jump into the specifications, let's talk about when would I expect to actually see this? Well, it seems to be saying somewhere in here that the cards are not taped out yet, which means we're not getting samples that they're really testing yet at this point. So all we have right now are targeted specifications to go off of, not actual like testing. Now, what does tape out even mean? Well, tape out, by the way, is hoping to be uh, targeted for third quarter of 2021, but tape out doesn't mean it's going to production. It means uh, like the designs are basically finalized. You could put a chip together, but it still needs to get into actual production. And to my knowledge, that generally t means at least six months ish, that, that's a rough estimate, before something would go into full production. So basically, if this is taping out in the third quarter of 2021, I wouldn't expect these GPUs until maybe like quarter two, 2022. But again, that's not an official timeline. That's me speculating based off of this Google translated tape out information, okay? Anyway, so that's when we would see these. So getting a GTX 1080 and their lower end model targeting the GTX 1050, by the way, uh, card in uh, at that date isn't super impressive, but who knows, what is the pricing? And given the fact that, it didn't say it here, but I found a WCCF tech article on the topic saying that these are on a 28 nanometer, nanometer process node, meaning they're not gonna be super energy efficient, but that might mean they're not competing for that production space at the high end. So if there's tons of supply and the price is really low because they're domestically produced in China, these could maybe be interesting for somebody looking for a low mid end uh, gaming system, we'll see. It looks like there might be some other drawbacks uh, when we dive into more of these specifications. Let me zoom in a bit here. That's still going to be kind of blurry, and that's not the fault of my video. That's just the quality of the image that this article has, and I can't find a higher quality version of it. Uh, also, these columns are in Chinese, but I think I can tell what they mean based on the specs that they list here. So what's going on in this, in this chart? We've got the JM9231, which is the lower end model, 
which should be targeting roughly a GTX 1050. And then we have the JM9271, which is targeting the GTX 1080. And we can uh, briefly compare their col these columns here. Obviously you can read this for yourself, so I don't wanna like go ramble on too long just reading through the chart, although I can help you maybe with a bit of what this is actually comparing. First of all, the API, I noticed something interesting here, which is the GTX cards are listed as supporting DirectX 12. These Chinese cards are not listed as supporting DirectX at all. Now, maybe they will, but they're not listed as, as supporting it. So that is, a, a um, in my opinion, a huge drawback to these things if they don't support DirectX. They're listing OpenGL and OpenCL support. Now, in terms of this line, which is clearly the clock speed, um, we're seeing 1500 megahertz on the low end model and 1800 megahertz on the high end model, making the low end have a higher clock speed than the GTX 1050 and the uh, higher end model just slightly a higher clock than the GTX 1080. In terms of the PCI support, the low end model is 3.0 uh, x16, whereas the higher end model is 4.0 x16, which does give that higher end model an advantage over the 1080. Again, you're competing against a card that's years old at the times of release, but hey, you know, that's their time target, so we're comparing it against that. Now, um, uh, here we have the memory bandwidth, and it's looking like these have big advantages in memory bandwidth over their, um, their targeted uh, NVIDIA cards from many years ago, uh, with 256 gigabytes per second uh, versus 112 gigabytes per second on the 1050, and 512 gigabytes per second versus the 320 gigabytes per second um, on the 1080 at their high end, high, high end. <laughs> competitor. Um, now, it's nice to see that the low-end model seems to be featuring eight gigabytes of question mark on whether it's GDDDR5, that's a question mark, but eight gigabytes of it, versus the three gigabytes on the on the 1050. So, well, the 1050 is not a great card. One of its limits is also just it, it's, its VRAM, so at least getting a modern level of VRAM on the card would be cool to see. Whereas the high-end model uh, looks like it'll be up to 16 gigabytes and a question mark on that might be HBM high bandwidth memory, uh, which could be interesting. Now, in terms of the pixel fill rate, we're seeing 32 uh, gigapixels per second on the lower end model and 128 gigapixels per second on the higher end model. Um, where the uh, low end model that places it a bit below the 1050, the high end model is actually placed a bit above the 1080. Now, in terms of the floating point operations, we're seeing 2,000 on the lower end model and 8,000 on the uh, on the higher end model, putting the high end model a little behind the 1080 and the lower end model a little above the 1050. In terms of these uh, like out output specifications, the only interesting thing, I mean, they, it looks like they have HDMI 2.0 support on both of them. And um, they only have DisplayPoint 1.3 on both both of them, whereas the uh, NVIDIA cards support the DisplayPoint 1.4. I don't think that's the end of the world here, but hey, it is a difference. And then the, the they're all supporting the H.265 4K 60 FPS on terms of the video codecs here. But then going into the uh, power thing here, here's where we're seeing a big drawback on probably due to that maybe that 28 nanometer process node would be my guess, but 150 watts on this GTX 1050 competitor, whereas that card draws 75 watts. And then less of a dramatic difference, but still higher power out, uh, power consumption here uh, on the high-end model being 200 watts versus the 180 watts. All right, are you guys interested in this thing? Um, I just think it's cool to see more competition all over the place. Um, I think just more competition, more things getting out there uh, is good. This seems to be part of the, uh, I think in general, Chinese push to get more domestic IP products out there manufactured and designed domestically in both the CPU and GPU space. Uh, this seems to be a big part of that. Let me know what you think about all this in the comment section. I do read all of those comments. Something you're interested in here? I think it's at least an interesting topic to follow and I'm curious how these things will perform once they're out there and I'm sure I'll cover that on the channel. So feel free to hit uh, subscribe if you're interested in uh, you know PC tech content mostly focused on GPUs and that kind of technology. Hope all of you have an excellent day.